souls and bodies. Let us ask the Lord for forgiveness and remission of our sins and transgressions. Ask the Lord for all that is good and beneficial to our souls and for peace in the world. Let us ask the Lord for the completion of our lives in peace and repentance. Let us ask the Lord for a Christian end to our lives, peaceful, without shame and suffering, and for a good account before the awesome judgment seat of Christ. Let us ask the Lord. Remembering Holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever-Virgin Mary, with all of the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. Through the mercies of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, your all holy, good and life-giving Spirit, now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Peace be to you all. Let us love one another that with one mind we may confess. We confess God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, Holy Trinity, one in essence and undivided. I love you, Lord. The Lord is my strength. The Lord is my rock. The Lord is my fortress. The Lord is my deliverer. Christ is in our midst. He is and always shall be. As you offer this blessing of love to one another, my sweet boys, Christ is in our midst, Agapimu. God bless you. I love you. I love my boys. Christ is in our midst. Remember to love one another. Christ is in our midst. Bravo. Christ is in our midst. Christ is in our midst. I mean, He is. I love you, boys. Christ is in our midst. Bravo. Christ is in our midst. My blessed future Olympian. Christ is in our midst. Christ is in our midst. Thank you, Chris. Christ is in our midst. He is and always shall be. The doors, the doors, guard the doors. Wisdom, let us. Be attentive. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not created, of one essence with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became man. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. He rose on the third day according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom shall have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, Lord, the creator of life,
who proceeds from the Father, who together with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who spoke through the prophets in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the age to come. Amen. Let us stand well. Let us stand in awe. Let us be attentive. Present the holy offering in the peace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with all of you. Let us lift up our hearts. And let us give thanks, Lord. Blessed be our God and our boy. Singing the victory hymn, proclaiming, crying out. And saying, I am better. It is proper and right to sing to you, to bless you to praise you and thank you and worship you in all places of your dominion, for you are God ineffable, beyond comprehension, invisible, beyond understanding, existing forever and always the same. You and your only begotten Holy Spirit, you brought us into being out of nothing, and when we fell, you raised us up again. You did not cease doing everything until you led us to heaven and granted us your kingdom to come. For all of these things, we thank you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit for all things that we know and do not know, for blessings seen and unseen that have been bestowed upon us. We also thank you for this liturgy, which you are pleased to accept from our hands, even though you are surrounded by thousands of archangels and tens of thousands of angels by the cherubim and seraphim, which are six-winged many-eyed and soaring with their wings together. With these blessed powers, merciful Master, we also proclaim and say you are holy and most holy, you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. You are holy and most holy and sublime is your glory, the world that you gave your only begotten Son, so that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. He came and fulfilled the divine plan for our salvation. On the night when He was delivered up, or rather, when He gave Himself up for the life of the world, He took bread in His holy, pure and blameless hands. He gave thanks, He blessed, He sanctified, he broke and gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take heed, this is my body which is broken for you, for the forgiveness of sins. Likewise, 
after the supper, the Lord took the cup, saying, Think of it all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As usual, please put down your kneelers reverently, gently. Remembering, therefore, this command of the Savior, and all that came to pass for our sake, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection on the third day, the ascension into heaven, the enthronement at the right hand of the Father, and the second and glorious coming. Lord, we offer to you these gifts, our own gifts, in all and for all. Once again, once again we offer to you this spiritual worship without the shedding of blood. And we ask, pray, and entreat you, send down your Holy Spirit upon us, upon these gifts here presented. God, have mercy upon me, a sinner. And make this bread the precious body of your Christ together. Amen. And that which is in this cup, the precious blood of your Christ together. Amen. Changing them by your Holy Spirit together. Amen. Amen. And amen. Especially for our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary. For Saint John the Prophet and Forerunner. God bless you, my boy. That's it. Simeon. Megatonomatsa Yestriados. Blessed be the name of the Holy Trinity, both of you. Atta boy. Blessed be the name of the Holy Trinity, now and ever, to the ages of ages. Amen. The holy, glorious, and most honored apostles for Saint Thaddeus, the apostle whose memory we commemorate today, and of all of your saints, through the supplications of God, bless us. Remember, Lord, those who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection to eternal life. Remember your servants, James, George, Robert, Georgia, Michael, Nicholas, Vasily, George, Dimitra, Eleni, Georgia, George, Leonard, Vernon, Stan, Ioan, Elena, Christu, Artimon, Evdokia, Georgia, Sophia, Octavian, Mihai, Barbara, Ion, Maria, Theodosia, Doreen, Alexandru, and Sonia, Chrysostom, and Demetrios, and Gary. Grant them rest, O God, for the light of your countenance shines. Again, we ask you, Lord, remember all Orthodox bishops who rightly teach the word of your truth, all presbyters and all deacons in the service of Christ, and everyone in holy orders. Above all, Remember, Lord, our Archbishop Gerasimus, grant that he may serve your holy churches in peace, keep him safe, honorable, and healthy for many years, 
rightly teaching the word of your truth. Remember also, Lord, those who each of us calls to mind and all your people. Remember, Lord, the city in which we live in every city and country. Remember, Lord, the travelers, the suffering captives. And grant that with one voice and one heart we may glorify and praise your most honored and majestic name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever and unto the ages of ages. The mercy of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of you. Having remembered all the saints, let us again in peace pray to the Lord for the precious gifts offered and consecrated. Let us pray to the Lord that our loving God who has received them at his holy heavenly and spiritual altar as an offering of spiritual fragrance may in return send upon us divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Having prayed for the unity of the faith, union of the Holy Spirit, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. We entrust to you, loving Master, our whole life and hope, and we ask and pray we and entreat. Make us worthy to partake of your heavenly and awesome mysteries from this holy and spiritual table with a clear conscience for the remission of sin, forgiveness of transgressions, communion of the Holy Spirit, inheritance of the kingdom of heaven, confidence before you, not in judgment or condemnation. And make us worthy, Master, with confidence and without fear of condemnation, to dare call you the heavenly God, Father, and to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Peace be to all of you. Let us bow our heads unto the Lord. By the grace, mercy, and love for us of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all holy good and life, giving spirit now and forever and unto the ages of ages. Lord Jesus Christ, our God, hear us from your holy dwelling place and from the glorious throne of your kingdom. Lord, you are enthroned on high with the Father and are also invisibly present among us. 
come and sanctify us and let your pure body and precious blood be given to us by your mighty hand and through us to all of your people. Let us be attentive. The holy gifts are for the holy people of God. The Lamb of God is broken and distributed, broken but not divided. He is forever eaten, yet he is never consumed, but he sanctifies those who partake of him, the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed is the fervor of your saints, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Be careful. Amen. The warmth of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated, my brothers and sisters in the Lord. As the whole meaning of the liturgy is offering. That's why we say, Lord, we offer unto you that which is yours from your from you, what you have given us. So as you consider making a generous gift in support of this ministry. Let us pray, O Christ our Lord, every good and perfect gift indeed comes from you, and everything we have is ultimately yours. Thus with grateful Eucharistic hearts we offer back to you from our lives what you have given us for blessing this parish and the work being done in your holy name. Can I see you after church? And Would you please stand, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, together. I believe and confess, Lord, that you are truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the first. I also believe that this is truly your pure body, this is truly your precious blood. Therefore, I pray to you, have mercy upon me, and forgive my transgressions, voluntary and involuntary, in word and deed, 
known and unknown, and make me worthy without condemnation to partake of your pure mysteries for the forgiveness of sins and life eternal. Amen. How shall I, who am unworthy, enter into the splendor of your saints? If I dare to enter into the bridal chamber, my clothing will accuse me, since it is not a wedding garment. Being bound up, I shall be cast out by the angels. In your love, Lord, cleanse my soul and save me. Loving Master, Lord Jesus Christ, my God, let not these holy gifts be to my condemnation because of my unworthiness, but for the cleansing and sanctification of soul and body and the pledge of the future life and kingdom. It is good for me to cling to God and to place in Him the hope of my salvation. Today, O Son of God, as a partaker of your mystical supper, I will not reveal your mysteries to your adversaries, nor will I give you a kiss as did Judas. But as the thief, I confess to you, Lord, remember me in your kingdom. God have mercy upon me, a sinner. My brothers and sisters and my spiritual sons, a sinner, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, once again I ask for your forgiveness knowing that I am flawed and I am a sinner and I ask you once again for your forgiveness. Behold, I approach Christ, our immortal King and God, the precious and most holy body of our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ, is given to me, John, the unworthy priest, for the forgiveness of my sins, to eternal life. Amen. The precious and most holy blood of our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ, is given to me, John, the unworthy priest, unto forgiveness of sins and to life everlasting. This has touched my lips, taking away my transgressions and cleansing me of my sins. Remember, Lord, your servants who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection to eternal life. Remember your servants, James, George, Robert, Georgia, Michael, Nicholas, Vasily, George, Dimitra, Eleni, Georgia, and George, Leonard, Vernon, Stan, Ioan, Elena, Christu, Artimon, Evdokia, Yorie, Sofia, Octavian, Mihai, Varvara, Ion, Maria, Teodosia, Dorin, Alexandru, and Sonia, Chrysostom, Dimitrios, and Gary and place their souls in a place of light, in a place of green pasture where pain and suffering are fled away. This we ask through the intercessions of the Holy Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary. with fear, faith, and love of God. Draw ye near. As usual, if for reasons of health or personal weariness, you need to be seated during the offering of Holy Communion, please do so, allowing 
the parish council to lead you up row by row. And as always, if you have prepared properly and reverently to receive, the Lord is waiting for you. The table is full. Come and receive him. Ε, 
πίτων μυρών σου δυνάται. Χαίρε και χαριτωμένη μετά σου ο Κύριος και διά σου με θύμων αλληλόγια. Η ωραιότητη σου και το καλή σου χαίρε ευλογημένη σι εν γυναίξη και ο καρπός τη σκυλία σου Αλληλούια και έχρησε ο Θεός, ο Θεός σου έρε. Θρώνε πυρήμορφε των τετραμόρφων υπερδόξων Αλληλούια Έλεον αγάλι ασέως Παρά τους μετόχους σου Χαίρε Μαρία Κυρία πάντων ημών Χαίρε μύτηρ τη ζωής Αλληλούια Παρέστη η βασίλισσα εκ δεξιών σου χαίρε υπερευλογημένη υπερδεδοξασμένη Αλληλούια Ακούσον θυγάτερ και είδε και κλείνον το ούσου χαίρε Αγιώτατε Χαίρε νύμφοι ανύμφευτε Αλληλούια Και πιλάθου του λαού σου και του οίκου του πατρός σου. 
Κέρε Αγία, Αγίον μίσο. Χαίρε νύμφι ανύμφε φτέ Το πρόσωπον σου λιτανεύσουσιν η πλούση του λαού Παναγί, αρθένε. Επάκουσον της φωνής του αχρίου ή και του σου. Στεναγμούς της καρδίας προσφέρει αενάους ευόδωσον δε σπίνα Αλληλούια, μνηστήσω με το όνομα σου εν πάση γενναία και γενναία. Αλληλούια, τον πατέρα προσκυνήσομεν και τον Υιόν δοξολογήσομεν και το Παναγίον όμο πάντες πνεύμα ανηνήσομεν κράζοντες και λέγοντες Ναγία Τρίας σώσον πάντας ημάς την μητέρα σι προσαγήσει Ήσυ και εσύ αν ο λαός σου Χριστέ θες παρακλήσεσιν αυτής του συκτήρμου σου δώσ ημίν αγαθέ ή να σε δοξαζόμεν την ελπίδα των ψυχών ημών. Απόστολοι εκπεράτω Συναθρησθέντες ενθάδε γευστημάνι το χωρίο Σατέ μου το σώμα και εσύ η 
And bless your inheritance. It's great. Yeah. 
Blessed be our God, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. That's fine. We use this today. It's good. Let us be attentive. Having partaken of the divine, holy, pure, immortal, heavenly, life-giving, and awesome mysteries of Christ, let us worthily give thanks to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy upon us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Having prayed for a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. For you are our sanctification, and to you do we offer glory, to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Let us depart in peace to the Lord. Lord, bless those who praise you and sanctify those who trust in you. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Protect the whole body of your church. Sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them in return by your divine power and do not forsake us who hope in you. Grant peace to your world, to your churches, to the clergy, to those in public service, to the armed forces and to all of your people. For every good and perfect gift is from above, coming from you, the Father of lights. For to you do we give glory, thanksgiving, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Christ our God, you are the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. You have fulfilled the dispensation of the Father, fill our hearts with joy now and ever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. May the blessings of the Lord and his mercy come upon you through his divine grace and love always, now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Glory to you, O God, and our hope. Glory to you. May Christ, our true God, who rose from the dead, as good, loving, and merciful. May the Lord have mercy upon us and save us through the intercessions of His most pure and holy Mother, of the power of the precious and life-giving cross, the protection of the honorable, bodiless powers of heaven, the supplications of the honorable and glorious prophet and forerunner John the Baptist, the holy, glorious, and praiseworthy apostles, of the holy, glorious, and triumphant martyrs, of our holy and God-bearing fathers and mothers, 
of the holy righteous ancestors of our Lord Joachim and Anna and of Saint Thaddeus the Apostle, whose memory we commemorate today and of all of the saints. Through the prayers of our holy fathers, Lord Jesus Christ our God, have mercy upon us and save us. God bless you, my beloved brothers and sisters in the Lord. May the Lord reveal himself to you in every aspect of your life. Once again, my beloved, Christ is in our midst. He is and always shall be. How wonderful it is to have so many people coming and receiving the Lord in Holy Communion. I'm especially touched by how many young people are here who I know are looking for some grounding and some depth and faith in an ever-changing culture. So we are, we, the church, I am delighted to have you here. Of course, Jason is not new, he's not a guest. Jason Lowe, Lowe uh, from Glendale, who will be baptized in the next few weeks or so. Mike, Melinda, and Andrew Sterling from Houston, Texas. George, uh, Marula, I'm not sure. George the third, Stiliani, uh, Schwinda, from Pasadena, California, and George Clidas from Phoenix. Welcome to all of you. Uh, a few housekeeping issues before I share some words with you. I ask you from the bottom of my heart, if you are not a steward in supporting the financial needs of the church, you would consider uh, becoming one or just monthly or, little, or by weekly, you can certainly infuse our cathedral with your own blessing. So if you need a stewardship card, the parish council people at the back can uh, offer you that. Now, you know we have our festival coming. For us, it's more than just the usual thing. For us, it is opening up the neighborhood as we have for the last 18, 19 years of the festival to bring people into an area that was unthinkable 20 years ago. And we get thousands. But more than that, more than the sales of food and, and the music and, and all of the others, they come to the church and they look. So it's a way for us to expose our faith for many who are looking for something that is substantive in faith. So we need your help to volunteer, especially those who have skills in social media, computers and the like, who have access to uh, a number of those. See me and say, you know, I have a database that reaches all the way to China. We'd love to talk to you. Uh, so help us to expose this area to gentrify it as it is being gentrified and to express uh, to expose and express our holy faith now changing from housekeeping we must realize i know it's difficult that essentially as the holy fathers of the church say we are essentially spiritual beings 
clothed. We are spiritual beings clothed, draped in the flesh. That's why the epistle reading today, we are temples of the Holy Spirit. Realize that we are essentially spiritual beings inhabiting, draped in this flesh for a period of time because we come from God and we return to God. Then we know how to feed the body. I'm sure you've looked at your watch and say lunch is coming on. We feed the mind, but the spirit is like a precious little kitten in the corner meowing, wanting to have some nourishment. We sort of oftentimes ignore it. And that's what causes us to have such difficult problems because we ignore that spiritual side, our soul, that God has breathed into us. And as Jesus breathed on his holy apostles, and he said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit, whose ever sins you forgive, they are forgiven. Whose ever sins you don't forgive, you retain, they are retained. So we are spirit beings. But the spirit is willing for all of us, but the flesh is weak. That's why I wanted to share with you these words in connection to our gospel reading today from a writer of spiritual writing. His name is Kenneth Kaufman. I have given you this before some years ago, but let me give it to you again, because when I speak to you like this with the honor of standing on this pulpit, I'm also speaking to myself. And so what does Kaufman say? about the soul and the way sometimes we we treat it I think my soul he uses interesting language is a tame old duck dabbling around in barnyard muck fat and lazy with useless wings but sometimes when the north wind sings, when the north wind comes, and the wild ones, the wild ducks, hurtle overhead, it remembers something lost and dead, and cocks a weary, bewildered, I, and makes a feeble attempt to fly. It's very content with the state it's in, but it isn't the duck it might have been. As cute as that is, we are, many of us, perhaps all of us, are in some way or another, our soul is like that duck, we're comfortable, we're all right, we're content, uh, we get a little bit fat and lazy in a poetic sense, yet deep down inside we know we can be much more, but we're content in the state we're in, we're comfortable, we sometimes dabble in the muck of our own habits and notions. But the Lord, and this is why the gospel reading today is so significant, but the Lord calls us to get out of our spiritual and religious comfort zones. You hear people saying, Etsy preppy, this is the way we do it. In the Orthodox Church, we're still fighting over calendars. Over calendars. Certain jurisdictions haven't yet even had August the 15th yet. Getting over those things, dabbling around in barnyard muck, you see? So we can't get out of our comfort zones and to trust Him 
in faith to enter the unknown. And what seems to be impossible for many of us, because we're afraid, because we're insecure, we're, we're, we're cautious about getting criticized, especially on social media. You can't sneeze today without getting an environmental impact study done. And if you say anything on social media, there'll be buzzards from all over criticizing and beating you up and you come to the point where you say, you know, I really don't want to risk anything. I don't really want to get out there. I just want to be comfortable and at peace. But without risking the God-given talents and the potential that we, we have really missed the boat. Today's gospel reading is very beautifully reflected in the window here where Jesus is reaching down to pick up Peter who because of lack of faith and fear begins to sink. Allow me, I didn't bring my watch up here so if I see you doing this maybe I'm talking too long. Listen to the uh, gospel reading but look deeply between the lines. Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. Why? Because he had just finished, remember last week, feeding the 5,000? That's just men. Who knows how many more? Maybe double that number. He was exhausted. So he said to the apostles, listen, I'll meet you on the other side. Go. And while and he, while he sent the multitudes away, the multitudes away, multitudes, he went up to the mountainside by himself. There are days where we need to be by ourselves to begin to reflect on the direction of our lives, especially you young people. Those of us who are moving into the winter of our lives, we repent for youthful indiscretions and mistakes, but many of you now, still in your youth, have the opportunity to make good choices that won't bite you in the end. You need to be by yourself. Turn off the computers and iPads and all the other things and face that soul by yourself. So Jesus went by himself to pray. Now when evening had come, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, meaning the Lake of Galilee. Believe me, I've been there and there have been some vicious storms. Uh, just as much as any large sea. In the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch, meaning just as little bit of light was coming about. The fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. Ah, I don't believe that. That's up to you. But this is a miracle of nature, that Christ the Lord, as God and man, indeed has power over the elements. And he walked on the sea, seeing that the apostles were distressed. They were afraid. And when the disciples saw him, like we'd, we would act the same way, walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. Immediately, Jesus spoke to them, saying, He speaks to us today, Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. Now Peter, the rambunctious, muscular, rough, risk-taking fisherman, answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, come on now, if, it's, if it is you and it's not a ghost, command me to come to you on the water. 
So Jesus said, come. And when Peter had come out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, and this is our fact, we are afraid, and we say, Lord, save me. And immediately, you can see it there, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Shocked, terrified individuals now were put in a state of calm, knowing that the Savior was with them. No man can walk on water, they were saying. However, what Jesus was teaching them is not that they were to walk on water literally. He was teaching them to take risks and to do the unthinkable and to do the impossible. You can imagine, he got out of the boat trying to do the impossible. His critics in the boat piped up and probably said, Are you crazy, Peter? You know how to swim, but it's terrible out there. No man has ever walked on water. Get back in here. What are you doing? Who do you think you are? I can imagine Thomas, the doubter, saying, Hey, Pete, I doubt that you'll make it. And Judas, in his crafty ways, would say, I hope he drowns that show off. So you see, there were always are going to be critics for anyone who branches out and does metaphorically want to walk on water. So if we want to walk spiritually on water, we must get out of our safe spaces. Risks for the Lord. Trusting that God will always be there because he is in us and we are in him. Isn't it tired? Isn't it tiresome, I should say, when you hear today's thing about young people at universities speaking about safe spaces? I've said this before, and microaggressions, and petty offenses. And use male man, it's got to be male person. And on and on and on, we have become fat and lazy, lazy with useless wings. But yet when we read the gospel and we see the potential of what can be, we look up with a weary eye and we see that we can indeed fly the way we were intended and spiritually walk on water. What happened to Peter when he literally went to see the Lord on the water, he took his eyes off Jesus and he sank. Lord, save me. Oh, ye of little faith, he said, you don't want to take any risk. Why did you doubt? Why do we doubt ourselves sometimes? Why do we fear criticism? Why do we fear rejection? If God is with us, who can be against us? So if you and I, especially you young people, want to walk on water. I'm not talking about going across Lake uh, uh, MacArthur, but to do the extraordinary, to reach where others have not reached. You've got to get out of your boat of comfort. You've got to get out of the boat and take risks. And even if you feel like you're sinking, all you have to say is, Jesus, save me, and the Lord is there. So, we must get out of the boat of our comfort and our laziness. 
You know, it's interesting as I conclude, you've seen the labels on the back of salad dressing and labels on medicine bottles, and syrups and things. It says, shake well before using. Shaking and usefulness are twin brothers. God doesn't forewarn. He doesn't explain sometimes when He shakes us into the reality of what we need to do. Because otherwise the sediment of apathy is at the bottom and there's no power and taste or effectiveness in what we're taking. He shakes us. God restores us. He helps us to do the impossible if we trust Him. By shaking us up, shaking us up from the barnyard, symbolically speaking, of the muck sometimes we're in, we may be seen as a sign of God's involvement. In other words, all the shaking that happens is really another way of seeing God's involvement in our lives. And so today as you leave, and you think about perhaps the gospel reading, and you think about young people, it doesn't matter whether you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, or 50s, it is we will not reach our full potential until we step out of that boat, until we reach out. And when we tremble, just remember this, and this is the reassurance you'll always get in the liturgy. Don't be afraid. For Jesus says, I am with you. And at the end of the Gospel of Matthew, he says, I will be with you even until the end of time. So as you leave this church today, not knowing what the week will bring our way, what shaking may happen in our lives and in our society, the key for us is to trust in God. The words, I am with you. God bless you.